Sangyutta Nikaya, The Connected Discourses, Sagata Vagga Sangyutta, Brahma Sangyutta, Connected Discourses Pertaining to the Brahma Gods, Dutiya Vagga, The Second Section, Suttas 6.11 to 6.15. Sutta number 6.11, Sanan Kumara Sutta. The Brahma God Sanan Kumara. This is what I personally heard. Once, the Blessed One was living in Rajagha, having found a suitable place to live and practice by the bank of the river Sapini. It was then that, late one night, the Brahma God Sanan Kumara appeared while illuminating the entirety of the Sapini river bank as he came and approached the Blessed One. Having respectfully bowed and venerated the teacher, he then stood to the side and spoke these words in verse. In the world of men, those born among the Kattiya royal class are the foremost in their enjoyment of all that life offers, as they hold dearly to their ancestry. However, throughout the entire existence, which includes both the worlds of gods and those of humans, the one who is perfected in his higher knowledge and moral conduct reigns supreme indeed. Having spoken these words, the Brahma God, Sanankumara, waited to see if the Blessed One would approve of his inspired utterance. Then, on seeing how the teacher gave his approval through his silence, the Brahma God, Sanankumara, became delighted, and by paying homage to the Blessed One, while circumambulating and keeping him to his right, he vanished right then and there. Sutta number 6.12 Devadatta Sutta Discussing Devadatta This is what I personally heard. Once, soon after Devadatta had tried to create a schism within the Sangha, the Blessed One was living in Rajagha's Gijha cliffs at Vulture's Peak. Then, late one night, the Brahma god Sahampati appeared while illuminating the entirety of Vulture Speak and the Gijha cliffs. And with the utmost respect and veneration, he came and approached the Blessed One. And by paying homage and bowing to the teacher, he stood to one side and spoke these words in verse. By its own very fruit, does the banana tree come to its end? So does the bamboo and the reed, too. Similarly, the evil-hearted person meets his end when he tastes honor and accolades coming his way, just like the impregnated mule is killed by the very embryo she carries. Sutta number 6.13 Andhakavinda Sutta At Andhakavinda This is what I personally heard. Once, the Blessed One was living in the Magadan country at the place called Andhakavinda. This took place when the Blessed One was meditating in seclusion underneath the open sky late one night as the gentle rain kept drizzling. It was then that the Brahma god Sahampati appeared, while illuminating the entirety of Andakavinda with his brilliance. Then, with the utmost respect and veneration, he came and approached the Blessed One, and by paying homage and bowing to the teacher, he stood to one side and spoke these words in verse in the Blessed One's presence. 
secluded places are what must be sought after, so that one can be all alone, to engage in proper practice, and thus be released from the fetters. That is, when you discover that being around other bhikkhus within the Sangha is not conducive for your practice, nor supportive of your growth. Even if you are able to practice with dedication, protected by the mindfulness you keep. By going from family to family, as you go on collecting alms for you to eat on a daily basis, wisely pay attention to the senses and what they pick up, while remaining mindful and fully alert. Seek out secluded places for you to engage in the proper practice to become liberated from all that may cause fear to arise in you, freed from any sense of being threatened. Surrounded by creepy crawlers that send shivers down one's spine, there, in the middle of the night, when thundering clouds burst out in stark lightning flashes, a bhikkhu sits meditating undeterred by all that's going on around him, unshaken. For this is certainly what I have personally seen and observed myself every single time. Hence, it's not something I heard being passed on from others. This is indeed the unmistakable fact that all those who truly live the holy life genuinely will come to number in the thousands and be declared the conquerors of death itself. Meanwhile, those who will come to be disciples in training, well, their numbers will be far greater than even 500 times 10, multiplied by another 10, and then yet by another 10 where all, by having entered the stream, will never taste rebirth into the animal realms ever again. As for those who, although haven't yet entered the stream, the ones who I know have engaged in real and heartfelt meritorious actions and generously share the merits of their deeds, well, their numbers I'm not even able to adequately count, as I would most probably make a mistake in justly relating their actual amount, and be speaking incorrectly, for they would be countless indeed. Sutta number 6.14 Arunavati Sutta At Arunavati. This is what I personally heard. Once, while the Blessed One was residing at the monastery donated by Anathapindika at Jeda's Park in Savati, he addressed the gathered bhikkhus there and said, Bhikkhus? Yes, Blessed Lord, the bhikkhus replied. And the Blessed One continued by saying, Bhikkhus, a long time ago, there used to be a king by the name of Arunava, who lived in his capital, Arunavati, that was named after him. This was during the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha of that age, who was living in the royal city of Arunavati, supported by King Aruna and his people. Now Sikhi, the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, had two chief disciples, whose names were Abhibhu and Sambhava. One day, the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, turned to his chief disciple, Abhibhu, and said, Accompany me, O Brahmin. 
come now, as we both go to the Brahma realm, where we can spend a day until it is time for our daily meal. Of course, Bhante, as you wish, said the Bhikkhu Abhibhu, the chief disciple of the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, and the perfectly self-awakened Buddha. Then, just as easily as a strong and agile man would extend his flexed arm, or pull back his outstretched arm ever so quickly, with that much speed, the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, along with his chief disciple, Abhibhu, disappeared from Arunavati and immediately reappeared in the intended Brahma realm. Once there, Sikhi, the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, again addressed his chief disciple Abhibhu, but this time while saying the following, Brahmin, as you feel moved and inspired by it, go ahead and teach these Brahmas the Dhamma. Instruct this assembly of Brahmas and their respective retinues on the Dhamma. And by saying, Yes, Lord, the chief disciple Abhibhu began instructing the Brahma gods in that realm along with their assembly of their other gods on the Dhamma. However, those Brahma gods and their members of their retinues began showing their discontent while complaining and making a raucous stating how it was not suitable at all for the student to be giving them a teaching on the Dhamma while his own teacher was right there next to him. Now, on seeing what was taking place, Sikhi, the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, again spoke to his chief disciple Abhibhu, as he encouragingly said, Brahmin, the Brahma gods, along with their respective retinues and their members, are complaining and dissatisfied, while thinking how it is not suitable at all for the student to be giving them a teaching on the Dhamma while his own teacher is right there next to him. So, seeing how this is the case, go ahead and jolt them up and bring them to their senses, O Brahmin by saying, Yes, Bhante. The chief disciple, Abhibhu, then resumed to teach the Dhamma to the Brahma gods and their respective assemblies and members of their retinues. However, he began instructing them while becoming invisible, hiding his physical body from their gaze, except for letting his voice resonate clearly making it be heard by everyone in that realm. Similarly, he kept teaching and instructing those Brahma gods, while at times fully revealing his physical form, and at times keeping it fully hidden from their sight. Also, he kept teaching them the Dhamma by revealing only half of his body, while hiding the other half. Thus he kept switching his physical form from being seen in its fullness, as he at times hid the upper half of his body, while revealing only his bottom half, or vice versa, only revealing his lower half as he kept his upper body invisible to them. Meanwhile, those Brahma gods and their respective assemblies and members of their retinues were highly impressed, fully captivated by and in amazement of the chief disciple's abilities while exclaiming, Behold the power and psychic might of this recluse, such incredible versatility in applying his psychic powers and with such ease and dexterity he displays them to us. It was then that the chief disciple turned to his teacher, Sikhi, the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, and said, Bhante, 
I recall how some time ago, when I was standing in the middle of the Sangha, I mentioned to my friends the bhikkhus. Friends, even while standing in the assemblies of Brahma gods in the Brahma realms, I can make my voice resonate throughout the ten thousand world systems and with such ease. Now on hearing these words, Sikhi, the Blessed One, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, encouragingly spurred the chief disciple on by saying, Then go ahead, Brahmin. Now is as great a time as any for you to stand here in the assembly of Brahma gods, within the Brahma world, as you declare and speak by making your voice be heard in the ten thousand world systems. And by saying, Yes, Bhante, the chief disciple Abhibhu stood there in the middle of the assembly of Brahma gods, surrounded by their retinue, and fearlessly began uttering these verses. Get up and engage, strive and put the necessary effort by applying yourselves resolutely to the Buddha's sasana. That way you will most certainly crush the very armies of death itself just like a mighty elephant easily destroys a rickety old hut made out of reeds. For all those who dedicate themselves to this Dhamma and Vinaya, diligently putting it into practice, while living according to its principles, at the same time, they're giving up also the very endless cycles of rebirths, and thus, they're the ones indeed who put an end to suffering. Then, having thus inspired, encouraged, and deeply moved the awestruck Brahma gods to have faith in their hearts, just as easily as a strong and agile man would extend his flexed arm or pull back his outstretched arm ever so quickly and with that much speed, the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, along with his chief disciple, Abhibhu, disappeared from that Brahma realm and immediately reappeared back in Arunavati. Now, the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, turned to his Sangha of Bhikkhus in the monastery and asked them this question. Bhikkhus, did you just hear your friend Bhikkhu Abhibhu's voice resonating as he stood there in the midst of the Brahma gods while addressing them in his inspired verses? And those Bhikkhus replied, Blessed one, we certainly did hear our friend Bhikkhu Abhibhu's voice resonating as he stood there in the midst of the Brahma gods while addressing them in his inspired verses. Then, the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, asked further, And what were his words that you heard, Bhikkhus, spoken in verse by your friend, Bhikkhu Abhibhu? Blessed Lord, these were the verses we heard clearly spoken by our friend, Bhikkhu Abhibhu. Get up and engage, strive and put in the necessary effort by applying yourselves resolutely to the Buddha's sasana. That way you will most certainly crush the very armies of death itself, just like a mighty elephant easily destroys a rickety old hut made out of reeds. For all those who dedicate themselves to this Dhamma and Vinaya, diligently putting it into practice while living according to its principles. At the same time, they're giving up also the very endless cycles of rebirths, and thus they're the ones indeed who put an end to suffering. Those were the inspired words we heard, blessed Lord, 
spoken by our friend Bhikkhu Abhibhu. Then the Blessed One, Sikhi, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha said, Sadhu, Sadhu Bhikkhus, you are speaking the truth indeed. For those were the exact words spoken by your friend, Bhikkhu Abhibhu, as he stood there surrounded by the Brahma gods, admonishing and encouragingly inspiring them to strive in the Dhamma and Vinaya, speaking to them fearlessly in their Brahma realm. These were the words spoken by the Blessed One, Gautama, the Arahant, the perfectly self-awakened Buddha of our age, and the bhikkhus were deeply inspired and utterly delighted as they listened to the words spoken by the Blessed One. Sutta number 6.15 Parinibbana Sutta The Blessed One's final state of release is Parinibbana. Once, the Blessed One was resting between the two Sala trees in the Sala forest of trees in the territory of Upavattana of the Mullan people at Kusinara. This was the time when the Blessed One was about to enter his final state of release, his Parinibbana. It was then that the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus one final time, as he said, Come now, bhikkhus, I exhort you. All compounded things are subject to fall apart and simply vanish. So apply yourselves with exceptional effort and strive on with diligence without holding back. These were the very last words spoken by the Blessed One, the Tathagata. Now immediately after saying these words, the Blessed One entered the first jhana, and successively, by emerging from the first jhana, he entered the second jhana. Emerging out from the second jhana, he entered the third jhana. Rising from the third jhana, he entered the fourth jhana. In emerging from the fourth jhana, he entered the sphere of infinite space. And from the attainment of the sphere of infinite space, he entered the sphere of infinite consciousness. And from the attainment of the sphere of infinite consciousness, he entered the sphere of nothingness, followed by him entering the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. And emerging out of the attainment of the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, he attained to the cessation of perception and feeling. Then, the Blessed One, by emerging from the cessation of perception and feeling, entered the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception yet again. Then he successively emerged from one and re-entered the lesser jhana. Thus, by coming out from the attainment of the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, he entered the sphere of nothingness. In emerging from that, he entered the sphere of infinite consciousness, followed by the sphere of infinite space. Then, by entering the fourth jhana, he emerged from it and entered the third jhana. Coming out from the third jhana, he entered the second jhana, and from there he entered back into the first jhana. Now this was followed by the Blessed One, again rising from the first jhana, and then re-entering the second jhana. Emerging from that state, he re-entered the third jhana, followed by the fourth jhana. And finally, by emerging from the fourth jhana, the Blessed One immediately attained to the full and final release of Parinibbana. Then, once the Blessed One had entered Parinibbana, without any residues remaining, the Brahma god Sahampati, who was present, 
uttered this inspired verse in honor of the Blessed One. All must depart. All beings that have lived must shed their forms by laying down this body. Indeed, even a master such as he, the peerless being, the Tathagata who has attained to unrivaled power, the Buddha Supreme has now passed away, never to be reborn again. And when the Blessed One had passed away by attaining to full and final release, Sakka, king of the Devas, spoke the following verse in honor of the Blessed One. Impermanent are all compounded things with their transient nature. They're all subject to appear and then disappear. Having come into existence, arisen from a cause, they vanish and are no more. Happy is the peace that comes when they forever cease. Then, when the Blessed One had passed away by attaining to full and final release, the Venerable Ananda spoke the following verse in honor of the Blessed One. Then there was terror, and the hairs all stood up when he, the all-accomplished one, the Buddha, attained to final, full release. And when the Blessed One had passed away by attaining to full and final release, the Venerable Anuruddha spoke the following verse in honor of his teacher, the Blessed One. No more is there breathing in or out, for the one with unwavering heart, unshakable, with utter dedication to tranquility and peace, the graceful sage has now come to his end. Untouched by mortal feelings, his liberated heart, like a flame, now finds final release. Sad. Sad. Sad.